హలో ఎవ్రీ వన్ దిస్ ఇస్ డాక్టర్ మణికంఠ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ రికార్డింగ్ ద అప్రోచ్ టు టేక్ కేర్ తి మ్యాస్ అంటే టెన్ మినిట్స్ ఓకే బై ది ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ టెన్ మినిట్స్ సెషన్ యూ ఎలిబుల్ టు డిఫరెన్షియేట్ డిఫరెంట్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ అర్తిమియాస్ అండ్ హౌ టు ఐడెంటిఫై దెమ్ యాజ్ లెస్ హౌ టు ట్రీట్ దెమ్ ఓకే లెట్స్ బిగిన్ ద సెషన్ ఇన్ టేక్ కేర్ తిమియా వెన్ యూఆర్ అప్రోచింగ్ టేక్ కేర్ తిమియా ద గోల్డ్ స్టాండ్ ఇన్వెస్టిగేషన్ ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ ఈసీజీ ఇన్ ఈసీజీ వాట్ ఇస్ ద ఫస్ట్ థింగ్ వీ లుక్ ఈజ్ ద హార్ట్ రేట్ రైట్ ఇఫ్ ద హార్ట్ రేట్ ఈస్ మోర్ దెన్ దట్ ఆఫ్ హండ్రెడ్ బీట్స్ పర్ మినిట్ or if it is less than or 60 beats per minute okay if the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute we call it as tachyarrhythmia we call it as tachyarrhythmia if the heart rate is less than or 60 beats per minute we call it as bradyarrhythmia bradyarrhythmia so how to identify tachyarrhythmia we have to look for the heart rate heart rate is more than that of 100 beats per minute we call it as tachyarrhythmia now how to calculate the heart rate in ecg in ecg how do you calculate that is for regular rhythm and for irregular rhythm okay for regular rhythm how to calculate the heart rate it is 300 divided by number of large boxes or 1500 divided by number of small boxes one large box is equal to 5 na so 300 into 5 it is 1500 therefore 1500 small boxes this is for the regular rhythm suppose this is an uh, ecg right suppose this is an uh, <coughs> ecg right and you are approaching this ecg right how to calculate a heart rate i told 300 divided by number of large boxes between the airways Cal- uh, look for the airways here this is one airway this is another airway look for the number of uh, uh, large boxes between them this is 1 2 3 and this is a 4 therefore it is 300 divided by 4 which is roughly 75 beats per minute is a heart rate in this uh, case okay right correct <coughs> suppose uh if the rhythm is irregular how to calculate the heart rate for irregular rhythm is number of r waves we have to look for the number of r waves in 6 seconds multiply it with 10 okay number of r waves in 6 seconds we know that one large box is equal to how many seconds one large box is equal to 0.2 seconds now for 6 seconds mean how many large box we have to calculate 6 divided by 0.2 which is 30 large boxes okay 30 large boxes suppose this is the ecg of the patient and consider it is a irregular rhythm na so we have to look for the r waves in 30 large boxes suppose this is the first large box suppose this is the first large box here right and count the second third fourth fifth sixth so on this is the 30th large box okay count number of r waves between them this is the first large box this is the 30th count number of r waves this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 therefore 8 into 10 number of large boxes in 6 seconds that is how many number of r waves in 6 seconds na therefore it is 8 multiplied with 10 therefore we get is 80 beats per minute is a heart rate correct this is for the number of r waves in 6 seconds into 10 in this case here it is 8 uh, number of r waves in 6 and that's 30 large boxes multiplied with 10 10 therefore we get is 80 beats per minute okay so so once you calculate the heart rate right if it is more than that of 100 beats per minute we call it as tachyarrhythmia the next step that we look in case of tachyarrhythmia is what the next step we look in tachyarrhythmia is we look for the qrs duration look for the qrs duration what is a normal qrs duration can you tell me it is lesser or equal to of 0.1 0.12 seconds it is lesser equal to of 0.12 seconds 0.12 seconds means how many small boxes lesser or equal to of 3 small boxes okay if the qrs duration is this much that is normal we call it as narrow complex tachycardia we call it as narrow complex tachycardia we call it as narrow complex uh, tachycardia if the qrs duration is more that is more than that of 0.12 seconds we call it as wide complex tachycardia this is known as wide complex tachycardia this is known as wide complex tachycardia this is known as wide complex tachycardia correct hmm. what are the causes of wide complex tachycardia one of the cause that we commonly know unless proven otherwise any wide complex tachycardia is vd is vd of course other differential diagnosis svt with aberrancy svt with aberrancy which is a uh, aberrancy means which includes bundle branch block right this includes bundle branch block or accessory pathways or accessory pathways accessory pathway if it is narrow complex tachycardia we call it as svt that means 
the origin of tech arrhythmia is from the atria at and above the av node if it is wide complex that is suggestive of usually vt that is uh, the uh, arrhythmogenic foci is located within the ventricle if it is wide complex or rarely it could also be due to svt with aberrancy that includes bundle branch block or accessory pathway correct mm. svt with aberrancy so suppose it was if it is svt right the next th thing is we look for the p wave p wave if the p wave is present or the p wave is absent suppose if the p wave is absent what are the differential diagnosis that comes on our mind there is a narrow complex tachycardia then we look for the p wave the p wave is absent the differential diagnosis psvt or atrial fibrillation then how to differentiate between them we have to look for the rhythm okay if the rhythm is regular if the rhythm is irregular suppose if the rhythm is regular we call it as psvt if the rhythm is irregular we call it as atrial fibrillation okay correct if the p wave is present present we look for the morphology of the p wave we look for the morphology of the p wave morphology of the p wave right this morphology of the p wave could be sinus p wave correct it could be sinus p wave we call it a sinus tank or it could be non sinus p wave non sinus p wave or it could be <coughs> greater record of three types of p wave or sawtooth appearance of the p wave sawtooth appearance sawtooth appearance of the p wave if it is sinus p wave we call it as sinus tank sinus tachycardia if it is non sinus p wave we call it as focal lateral tachycardia if it is more than of three types of p wave we call it as multifocal lateral tachycardia if it is sawtooth appearance we call it as atrial flutter atrial flutter correct so remember in these the rhythm could be regular or irregular as well the rhythm could be both it could be either regular or irregular in multifocal lateral tachycardia the rhythm is usually irregular and fl atrial flutter the rhythm is usually regular however it could also be irregular okay in sinus tachycardia the rhythm could be both regular or irregular okay now mm. that's how we have to approach an arrhythmia okay suppose uh, how do you treat an arrhythmia once you diagnosed how do you treat whether it is a svt or if it is in a vt okay we have to look for the hemodynamic stability hemodynamic hemodynamically if the patient is unstable whether it is a svt or vt we don't bother if the patient is hemodynamically unstable that means the blood pressure is lesser record of 80 mm of hg hemodynamically unstable then the first thing we have to do is a dc shock is a treatment of choice for any arrhythmia that is for svt and vt if the hemodynamically unstable we have to give the dc shock this is true for all except do not give dc shock for sinus tach man okay this is not for the sinus tachycardia sinus tachycardia also type of svt but it is a normal variant we do not give a dc shock there okay even in case of multifocal lateral tachycardia there is no role of dc shock suppose if svt patient is stable stable what do you give we have to go for av nodal blocking agents av nodal blocking agents okay these includes can you know uh, name any av nodal blocking agents mnemonic is a b c d drugs na a for adenosine adenosine as well as amiodarone amiodarone b for beta blockers c for calcium channel blockers that is dihydropyran no, uh, non dihydropyran calcium channel d for digoxin okay for uh, vt if the patient is stable we go for amiodarone amiodarone or procainamide that means amiodarone can be given for svt amiodarone is also can be given for vt therefore if you even if you don't know what is the arrhythmia just if he is just a differentiate it is not a sinus tach unstable give dc shock if he is stable go for abc that is adenosine beta blocker calcium channel digoxin or go for amiodarone if it is vt go for amiodarone amiodarone is a broad spectrum anti arrhythmic drug anti arrhythmic drug okay that's why if you don't know any arrhythmia if you don't know what is the type of arrhythmia we can give amiodarone for any arrhythmia except where the amiodarone is contraindicated amiodarone is contraindicated in which type of arrhythmia i told what amiodarone can be used for any arrhythmia except these two arrhythmias one is polymorphic ventricular tachycardia because 
itself it causes q to prolongation which can lead to top sorry point and that's why it is contraindicated that is digoxin induced arrhythmia digoxin induced arrhythmia digoxin induced arrhythmias okay in these two exceptions rest all we can go for the amiodarone okay na so uh, le, uh, we give we go for few examples of ecg this is a normal ecg okay we are uh, we are seeing a patient this is the ecg right what you are able to see here suppose what is the heart rate here around what is the heart rate here? this is one large box this is the second large box this is a rr interval so how many large boxes between the rr interval i am having two therefore 300 divided by 2 which is 150 is the heart rate 150 means more than 100 therefore it is a case of tachyarrhythmia I told what once there is a take care of what is next step we have to look is QRS duration na? QRS duration so what is the QRS duration here look for the QRS duration so it is look look these all these are QRS only na? so QRS is less than that of 0 0.12 seconds that is three small boxes that means it is a case of narrow complex tachycardia narrow complex tachycardia correct yes if it is narrow complex tachycardia, what is the next step you look for to dif uh, differentiate different types of uh, SVTs? This is suggestive of SVT, na? differentiate. We have to look for the P wave. P wave. Is there any P wave you are able to find? Yes, this is the P wave. 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 Yes. If the P wave is present, that means uh, PSVT, if atrial fibrillation are rolled out, what you are left is sinus stack, focal atrial tachycardia, multifocal atrial tachycardia, and the saw tooth appearance, that is atrial flutter. Here, what is able, what you are able to see is a sinus P wave. What you are seeing is a sinus P wave. Therefore, it is a case of sinus tachycardia. Sinus tachycardia. Okay, this is the case of sinus tachycardia. Come to the next ECG. By ECG, we are looking only, we can tell without even calculating the heart rate, this is a case of tachyarrhythmia, right? It is a case of tachyarrhythmia. The heart rate is around 200 beats per minute. Okay. The next step in tachyarrhythmia, what is look is QRS duration. So, what is a QRS? Here it is narrow complex. So, it is narrow complex tachycardia. That means it is supraventricular tachycardia. Is there any P wave now? Next step in case of SVT, that is narrow complex tachycardia, what we look is P wave. Is there any P wave here? There is no P wave. That means the differential diagnosis PSVT or it could be either uh, atrial fibrillation. Then how to differentiate between them? We have to look for the rhythm. Here the rhythm is regular. Therefore, it is a case of PSVT. That's how we have to approach in a stepwise manner. Do not directly jump to the conclusion. Like this, we have to come then we will remember it for a long time and it is very useful even in case of clinical practice as well. So come to the uh, ECG3. Okay. Right. If you look at the ECG3 here. Right. So almost so uh, directly I am going. It is a case of tachyarrhythmia. Right. By Because they are having fast heart rate. Right. The next step in tachyarrhythmia you have to look for the QRS duration. Here it is a QRS duration is again see here it is less three small boxes occupying less than three small boxes. therefore it is a case of narrow complex tachycardia narrow complex tachycardia right that means it is a case of svt next thing a, we look for what p wave is there any p wave here i do i am not able to see any p wave in the rhythm state therefore there is no p wave that means it could be psvt or atrial fibrillation whether the rhythm is regular or irregular see here here uh, gap is one uh, one uh, one small box here it is again sorry here the gap is one large box here three one two therefore the rhythm is irregular therefore it is a case of atrial fibrillation okay it is a case of atrial fibrillation right come to the ecg4 here what you see again the heart rate is more therefore the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute that means this is a case of tachyarrhythmia Right, the next thing we have to look for is the QRS duration. What is the QRS duration here? It is more than that of 0 0.12 seconds. That is wide complex tachycardia. If it is wide complex tachycardia, unless proven otherwise, it is a case of VT. One compared of SVT with aberrancy. That is bundle branch blocks are, bundle branch blocks are uh, accessory pathways. How do you treat this case? 
this case if the patient is hemodynamically unstable give dc shock if the patient is stable go for amio daro that's it okay thank you please do subscribe and like the video thank you